Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with another update for my big fat eyeshadow project. We are getting towards the end of the year which means that we don't have too many updates left with this project uh, but I've still been loving it. It's still fun to go through my palettes and use them as a whole and create looks. So if you're new to this project, which I'm assuming most of you guys aren't, um, I just want to give you a brief kind of little introduction to the project. I have a couple parts in this project. I of course have the main Big Fat Eyeshadow project part, where I choose three hand-selected palettes and uh, my Product Level Up palette normally. Or if I have been like already working on my Product Level Up palette in this project, I um, hand-selected a fourth palette. So I have four palettes at a point in time that I work on, and my goal with those palettes is basically to do kind of like a one week one palette with each of those and then to create three exclusive looks with each palette. So I share all of the looks in this project um, and I talk through the palettes. And once I complete the three looks and the week of use, I um, do a rating for each palette. I do four categories and a palette can score a max of 20 points. So I kind of have like a ranking system that way too. So that is like the main part, I guess, of this project. Uh, but on top of that, I also have Expand Those Pants, which is a project that was created by Dora. She um, wanted to create, I think she was inspired by other people, I know like Emily Max is on a similar thing too. Um, but she basically uh, invited me into doing this project where you pick an eyeshadow that already has pan and you have to basically use that a certain amount of times to expand the pan. And what I do is with those four focus palettes that I have, I do pick, if they have pans in them, I pick one pan per palette to use five times. So that's how I'm integrating that project. Um, and then lastly, for this video, I also have my eyeshadow bank. Um, which is created by Lara Force. Um, that kind of is a project where you can, it's kind of like a low buy, no buy type of project. Um, and the only way to buy eyeshadows is to earn points um, for your collection, for usage, for hidden pan, things like that. Um, and, you know, I'm going to talk through that as well. So that is the main gist of this project. I'm going to jump into, I think, the eyeshadow bank first. But before I do so, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. Let's jump into the video. All right, so I have my list right here of all of the ways I earned points in September. So I'm gonna talk you through them. The first way was uh, from No Pan Left Behind. Um, and if I hit No Pan Left Behind on a palette the first time only, uh, that is one point. And I had four palettes that I hit that on in September. The first one was my Anastasia Subculture palette, which is actually in this project and um, as one of my Big Fat Eyeshadow project pa uh, palettes. So that one I no pan left behind on. I also did it on my Huda Beauty Gold Obsessions palette, which is my panel palette from last year. I only have three shades left in that palette, so it was very easy no pan left behind to hit. I have Anastasia and Novena, which was in this project last month, and I had a couple of shades left to use. So we have that one, um, and then we have the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream. Um, so that is the four palettes that I hit no pen left behind on in this past month. The next way I can earn points is for usage and I have a couple different threshold. First up we have 10 uses. So anytime I hit 10 uses on a shadow, you know, even if that's like 50, 60, whatever it is, every time it's an even 10, I get one point. So let me go through because I have 14 points earned in this category. I have a couple from my Anastasia Soft Glam palette. I hit uh, 20 uses on Sienna for a total of 80 in the year. And I hit 10 additional uses on Burnt Orange for a total of 70 throughout the year. Um, and then I also have the shade Noir, which is the black in the palette. I hit 10 uses for a total of 20 in the year. Um, and then lastly from that palette, I have Orange Soda, which I also hit 10 uses on for a total of 50. So those are um, where I hit the kind of my 10 threshold for my palette palette. On top of that, we also have my Burberry Rosewood eyeshadow, which is the one I use in my brows. Um, and I hit 30 uses on that one for a total of 270 uses. It's probably my most used shadow this whole year, but it's because, again, I use it in my brows almost every single day. Um, then I have another single kind of potted product that is the Stila Metallic Peach eyeshadow, which is in medical panning. I hit another 10 threshold for a total of 40 uses this year for that eyeshadow. Um, I have my Odin's Eye Red Dragon palette and the shade Jade, which I used 10 times for a total of 10. Um, and then we also have Cleona Lionel Queens, which I hit 10 uses on as well for a total of 10. We have my Colourpop Amaze Super Shock Shadow, which I'm trying to finish in my Yellow Product Pan. I hit 20 uses on it in September, which is really good for a total of 50, so two more points there. And then the last shadow that I hit at 10 threshold for is the Shine by SD single in Golden Girl, which is in my panel's eyeshadows. I hit again 10 uses for that shadow. So 14 points there. Then we do have my 100 
a user's threshold, which I didn't get any points from this past month. I do, however, think that Burberry Rosebud is going to make an appearance in there again um, because I'm sending again a 270 users at the last kind of um, end of the month. So I only have 30 more users for that one to be a 300, which would be, would be insane. But I think I'm going to hit that as well. So maybe next month I can wrestle points for 100 users. Then we have next way I can earn points is through pants. So I had two pants in the month of September. The first one was the shade Jade from the Odin's Ivory Dragon palette in my pan of eyeshadows. And the second one was the shade Corset from my Beauty Bay Love Nose palette, which was in my product level up. So two pants there. Um, and also in the month of September, I did not finish any eyeshadows, so no points earned there. Um, and that's all the ways that I can earn points. So if you calculate all of that together, I was able to earn a total of 20 points in the month of September, which corresponds to two eyeshadows, because how I calculate it is each eyeshadow that I bring into my collection is 10 points. So yeah, 20 points equals two eyeshadows. And at the moment, I am still leaving myself out of a negative. I actually haven't purchased anything this year, but I have been gifted three palettes. So I am in the negative. Um, and I'm saying three palettes. I only mentioned two to you before, but I have I want to mention today. That's why I'm saying three. So just before I talk about that palette, um, I do want to say that at the last update, I was standing at minus 90 points. So um, that would have been, you know, nine shadows. Um, and with those 20 additional points coming in, I would have been at uh, minus 70 points. However, I do have a new palette in my collection. One of my lovely subscribers sent this to me which is actually a Pat McGrath palette I'm very very grateful um I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name but I think it's Kiora I think so again thank you very much you know who you are and I'm very grateful for this palette and um, it's a really, really beautiful one and I'm very excited to have it in my collection yeah so she messaged me in a comment saying hey I have this palette I would love to send it to you and it's actually one that's been on my wish list anyways and that one is this palette right here which is the Midnight Sun palette from Pat McGrath we did have some casualty in shipping um, this shade here and this shade here shattered. So the palette is a little bit better, but I was able to repress them really nicely and they look absolutely fine now. Um, this shade here also has like a small crack in it, but I think that's that's fine. Um, and overall, I'm just really, really grateful that I managed to get this palette from one of you guys. Uh, so again, really thankful and um, very, very happy. And I love this palette. It's so beautiful. I've swatched it out several times and I can't wait to use this one in this project in. I don't think I'm going to do it this month. I know I'm not because I know I'm going to roll it in, but I'm going to roll this one into my November big palette project. So I'm going to be, I'm really excited to play around with this palette then. But yeah, very, very happy. And this shadow here is so stunning. The special shades in general, I really like this kind of bluish purple. It's such a unique tone. So very happy with this palette. But as you know, Petograph palettes have 10 shades in them, which means that I'm going an additional 100 points in the negative. So as of the end of September, beginning of October, I was standing at minus 170 points, which is not ideal. Um, at, ultimately, at the end of the year, I want to stand at zero. Um, I do have a rule that I can't buy anything. I can't like, go into the negatives on my own. But if I'm gifted something, you know, again, I can go into negatives. So that's fine. And that's kind of why I'm ended up in the situation that I am now. So yeah, like I said, ultimately, I do want to be at zero points at the end of the year, at least. Um, and I have, I did say earlier this year that I don't think I'm going to allow the clutters to be counted towards the points. But since we are getting towards the end of the year, I mean, 170, let me see, that's divided by three means I have to get 56 to 57 points every single month to be at zero and I don't think that's feasible um, I think the highest month I've ever had is around 35 points so I don't know if that can be feasible so I think at the end of the year I am going to allow the clutters and I kind of I guess will have to declutter until I'm back to zero which is fine because I'm planning to declutter palettes anyway and um, so that's going to be my, my kind of I think end goal with this project if I do continue going into negative um, I need to declutter to make sure that I'm at least at zero uh, but I'm going to discuss that later on. But yeah, that is the end of my beauty budget or my eyeshadow bank. Really kind of, you know, happy with how it's going this year. Even though I am in the negative, I actually haven't bought anything myself, which is something that I'm really, really proud of. And I've only brought in three palettes in my collection. So again, super grateful for that. But let's move on to the next section, which is, again, my big fat eyeshadow project. Where I'm going to talk you through the palettes I've been working on over the last month. Um, and when I talk through each palette, I'm also going to talk you through the Expandos pants, of course. 
So we're going to start off with week number one, which is where I use this palette right here. This is my subculture palette, but as you can see here in the footage, this one doesn't look like the normal subculture palette, and that is because it is a mix between subculture and the Jackie Aina palette. I picked out all my favorite shades from both of those palettes, and I created this beautiful, beautiful autumnal color story. I honestly really love this palette, um, and I'm really happy that I got to play around with it in the past month. So let me talk you through the three looks that I did. So we're going to start off with the look right here. So this is one where I took All Star, um, or it's actually Edges, um, in my outer corner and crease, which is a beautiful kind of rusty red shade. And then to blend that out, I took the peachy shade Roxy in the palette, um, yeah, to blend everything out. To deepen out the outer corner, I took the shade Rowdy, which is actually a credit from the Yucca palette, in my very outer corner and close to like the lash line, just to give a little bit more kind of depth back there. Um, and then for my lid, I went in with one of my favorite shadows from, you know, any kind of mainstream brand, and that is the shade Electric. And I put that all over the lid, um, which is a super pretty kind of greenish a duochrome shade. For my inner corner, I took the shade Untamed, which is Trust Issues from the Jackie Aina palette, in my inner corner, like I said, and then for my lower lash line, I took Axis, which is actually Ginger, again, from the Jackie Aina palette. So yeah, four out of the six shades was from the Jackie Aina palette, and the other two was from the original subculture palette, but yeah, I really love this look. Super, super pretty. Um, I used it in a video, and I got some compliments on it, and I think in general, it was a really, really nice, very autumnal look. For day number two, I wanted to dip into some of the kind of greenish shades in this palette. So I started off with the shade Destiny on my outer corner. Um, and then I took the shade New Wave, which is kind of like, um, it's like a really interesting orangey kind of color. And I took that in my inner crease to create a contrast with the greens. Um, for my upper crease, um, kind of all over, I took the shade Edge. Um, which I think is, is like a yellow shade, so it works both with that orange and that green. And then to blend everything, I took the shade Dawn. Uh, and all of those shades are original from the subculture palette. However, the next shade, which is in the spot of Mercury, is actually the shade sponsored from the Jackie Aina palette. And I took that one um, kind of on my outer lid to blend from that green. And then for the center of my lid, I took the shade uh, Drawless, which is in the shade of Adorn. Um, and then for my inner lid and in the corner, I took the shade um, Trust Issues in the spot of Untamed again, uh, which is a really, really beautiful kind of iridescent gold shade. And that was look number two. For day three, I wanted to do something super simple, something like not very, you know, too out there. I tried to do like a very simple look with most of my palettes now because that's kind of where I wear on the daily when I go to office and stuff like that. So I started off with the shade Fudge on my outer corner, which is a beautiful kind of warm brown. Um, and then I, in the crease, I took the shade Dawn, which is a really, really light, just deeper than my skin tone kind of sensation shade. And I also put that one on, on my lower lash line, by the way. For all over the lid, I took this beautiful shade called Sam, which is originally from the Jackie Aina palette, but it's in the spot of Cube. Um, and then again, for my inner corner, I took the shade Trust Issues slash Untamed, uh, which is what I used for all three looks. So yeah, those were my three looks with this palette. Again, I really, really love how this palette looks. It's like such a beautiful autumnal palette to me. It's like a unique type of take on a like um, autumnal palette. But yeah, really happy with this one. So um, before I talk about the ratings, I just want to talk you through the uses. So I did use Sam once, um, Dawn twice, Destiny once, Drawless once, Edges uh, once, responses and gingered all of those ones actually for the second row as well i used every single shade once apart from a uh, trust issues which is right here i used that once seven times so that is my uses the only shade i really used more than once is again uh, trust issues and dawn which i used twice so that is my uses for this palette and one of the reasons why I used Trust Issues so much was because that was my Expandos Pants shade. Um, and again, I used that one seven times to quite a lot, uh, which means I also surpassed my five use goal for that shadow. So let's move on to the ratings. Um, I do, like I said, have uh, 20 points total with four categories. The first one is Color Story. And I gave this one the max point of five. I said, am I biased to this color story because I made it? 100%. But I honestly think this is such a well-rounded color story. Considering that this is the Jackie Aina palette and it's a culture together, it goes so well um, and these tones are right up my alley. So again, top points for color story. Really, really do love this one quite a bit. For versatility, I gave it a four. I said, although this color story leans more autumnal in the tones, like warm yellows, oranges, greens, etc., there's still quite a bit of versatility. There is some cooler tones and some grungier tones as well. Um, then you have those kind of more brighter summery tones. And you also have depth 
as well as lighter shades to make more both more intense as well as light looks so four for Cecilia Z. For quality I gave it a four I said these are my favorite shades from two palettes so it's also my favorite quality out of the two. Um, is the palette perfect? No. There's a few shades that aren't as sparkly or as blendable as I would like them to be. But overall, these are some of the best Anastasia shades that I have in my collection. For personal ranking, I gave it a 5. I said, so yes, this is a self-curated palette. So of course, it's going to get a high score. Um, these are some of my favorite shades and it was such a joy to use this palette. I can see this one being a really, really good one for me to use every single day both for summer and autumn, so five points there. And adding all of that together, this palette scored in at 18 out of 20 points. All right, so let's move on to palette number two, which is this one right here, which is my Metropolis palette from Natasha Renona. This is a really, really beautiful color story. It is one of her 28 pounds, um, and it's the only one she's ever done in the small format, which I think is a shame because this is a, such a beautiful palette, and I wish she did more palettes in this format. Uh, so yeah, this is what the palette looks like. It has a lot of warm tones, but also some cooler tones, some greens, things like that. And let me talk you through the three looks. So for day number one, I started off with the shade Azoic um, in my outer corner and lower lash line, which is kind of like a almost poopy brown. It's like a brown with slight green undertones, but it's a super, super pretty shade. Um, and then I took the shade Rope into my crease, uh, which is more of a kind of sandy shade. For the outer half of my lid, I took the shade Noble, which is a kind of like a cold toned taupe shade um, and then for my inner lid i took the shade orium which is a beautiful kind of green leaning duochrome sparkly shade i really do love this shade a lot and um yeah so that was on my inner lid and then to wrap up this look i took the shade symbol as a liner which is kind of like a um, turquoisey bluish green kind of shade it's one of her cream to powder mattes so yeah that was the first look i wanted to make a more of a neutral look but then i did a pop of kind of that liner um, so that again was the first look. I really really like how that one turned out. So for day number two I did a very different look and um, I did more of a kind of smoky eye I'm not sure if, how much I love this look, but it's I still wanted to do something different So I started off with the shade Enigma, which is uh, one of her cream to powder mattes again It's the really kind of more true blue shade and I put that one on my outer corner my crease and my lower lash line Used to kind of blend everywhere um, and then for my lid I went in with the blue shimmer of the palette called Aquarius um, put that all over my lid uh, and then for my inner corner I took the shade Queen um, just to kind of brighten things up and give me a pop of yeah inner corner highlights so that was the second look very simple I only used those three shades um, but it became a kind of beautiful blue smoky eye so for day number three I wanted to dip into more of the greens in this palette so I did like a green and gold look uh, and I started off with the shade Royal in my outer corner and um, followed with Lethal in my crease, which is kind of like the lighter green shade in the palette. For my outer lid, I took the shade Penny, which is like a kind of like a rusty orange penny type of shade. Um, and then my inner lid, I went in with the shade Blaze, which is more of a kind of neutral, still warm bronze type of shade though. And then to fuse them kind of together, I finally took the shade Fuse um, on my center lid, which is kind of like a mix between the two. It's um, slightly less kind of orange leaning penny-ish than um, penny, but it's not as kind of neutral as Blaze. Um, and then for my lower lash style, I went in with the shade Troop, which is uh, more of a, again, kind of greenish brown. Um, but yeah, it's not as kind of brown. It's a little bit more green leaning. So put that on my lower lash line. Um, and then for my inner lower lash line, I went in with, again, another shimmer shade, and I picked Empira for that one. Um, and to wrap up that last look, I went in with Queen again on my inner corner, and that was look number three. And again, I do have two pans in this palette. I have pan on uh, this green shade down here, as well as this inner corner shade. And the one I chose for expandos pans is Queen, which is this one right here. Um, so I wanted to use that one five times, and I'm happy to say that I have done that. But for yeah, the rest of the palette, I'm actually not going to go through uh, the usage because there's so many shades in here. Uh, but I have used majority of them. There's a handful that I haven't used. And again, most of these I used just once apart from Queen. So uh, I'm just going to mention the ones I have not used. So I have Rust, Shield, Maze, Crest, Pure, Jubilee, Claret, and Helena. So a lot of them is, it's actually this one right here. This one is Jubilee. I also have like these kind of more reddish shades right here. Um, I do also have some of the kind of more orange shades because I didn't do any more like of these warm neutral orange looks so a lot of the uses that i don't have 
is in like this part of the palette right here. And if I did a fourth look, I definitely would have done a look like that. And I will do that in this month um, whenever I get a chance because I do want to also complete No Pen Left Behind on this palette. So let's go through the ratings for this palette too. We're going to start off with Color Story. So I actually gave it a three for Color Story. And I said, I love this Color Story when it first came out. I was so drawn to it due to the warm greens and neutral tones. It was the first Natasha Nona palette I purchased. Um, however, the more I used it, I realized a lot of flaws in it. There's a lot of repetitiveness and a lot of similar depth shadows. Um, it, I think it's missing like the light shimmers for me um, and also some really deep neutral mattes. So you do have some deeper mattes like the blue and the greens and turquoise, those couple of shades. But it's missing like again, those kind of neutral deep mattes for me. So yeah. I only gave it three for color story, which was surprising to me actually. For versatility, I gave it a four. I said with 28 shades, you would hope that there would be a lot of versatility, and there is. But following on with the previous point, there is a few things missing, and it's hard to do lighter, more subtle looks, and a lot of looks end up at a similar depth. So that's kind of like the main, again, flaw I have with the uh, versatility. But again, I gave it a four, so decent score there. For quality, I gave it a 4. I said I do love the quality in here. The shades blend beautifully and the shimmers are impactful. However, I did have a few issues with creasing, especially with the cream to powder shades. You might have seen this in one of my looks in my second kind of blue look. There was a slight bit of creasing. So that's why I couldn't give it a 5 because I did have that small issue. It was only in that look though. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's a great palette, so 4 points. For personal ranking, I gave it a 4, and I said I do really like this palette, but I can definitely see the flaws in it for me. Yes, I do still love it and appreciate it, but it's not my perfect palette, mainly due to the points that I mentioned before, like, for example, the like, black of lighter shades. Um, I do have a wish that I don't know I would release more palettes in this format because I love the 28 size with these smaller pants, which is something I mentioned before, so I gave it a 4 for that ranking. And that means that this palette comes in at 15 out of 20 points. So that is my Metropolis palette done. Um, let's move on to the next palette, which is another Natasha Nona palette. It is the Yucca palette, which is a relatively new palette. It's actually one of the three palettes that I bought in this year that I've been gifted, which again, I'm very, very grateful for. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful color story. They have like a lot of kind of warm greens and oranges and they all have those kind of like more muted grungy undertones which i think is really really fun apart from camu camu so honestly it's a perfect color story up my alley but let's go through the three looks again so we're going to start off with look number one which is a really really fun i wanted to be creative with this look because this palette really just just like pull out my creativity so i started off with this look right here which i took camu camu in my inner crease in a lid and in the corner, which is that really bright kind of green shade in the palette. Um, and then I took the shade Citrine on my center crease, which is more of a kind of greenish yellow kind of shade. Um, then for my center lid, I went in with the shade Ixia, which is an orange, kind of like a grungy orange. Um, and then to blend between Citrine and Ixia, I took the shade Fushi, which is like the lighter kind of orange in the palette. For my outer corner, I wanted to do a contrasting shade again. So I went in with the shade Willow um, on my outer corner and outer crease, as well as on my outer lower lash line, which is the last shade in the palette. Um, and then I moved in to the kind of shimmer shade and I went in with the shade Plantasia, which is the first shade in the palette. And I just topped that very lightly on top of Ixia. Um, and then for the rest of my lower lash line, I went in with the shade Acacia, which is more of a kind of grungier green. So that was look number one. I really, really love how this one came out. I, I think it's a beautiful look. It was very fun to create and I wore this one in, I think, one or two videos and I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. So for day number two, I wanted to do more of a neutral-ish kind of look um, and go into more of the cool tone shades in the palette. So I started off with the shade Flax on my outer corner, which is like the deep cool tone in the left-hand corner. Um, then I went in with Acacia again on my crease, which is that kind of muted down army green, I would say. And I put that in my crease. On my upper crease and to blend out that shade, plus on my lower lash line, I went in with the shade Tipu, which is very similar to be honest, but it's a little bit lighter than Acacia. Um, and then for my lid, for my lid shade, I went in with the shade Machia. Um, and I put that on my center lid, which is the shimmer shade on the bottom row. For my inner lid um, and inner corner, I went in with the shade Como Rebi, which is the top center shade. And it's a beautiful, cool tone kind of shimmer. It's very sparkly, super pretty. 
um, and then to blend between the outer corner and the shimmer shades I went in with the shade Ray which is more kind of a satiny type of shimmer shade and that one is the one on the last column so that is look number two again really happy with this look and um, again I wanted to do something a bit more kind of neutral leaning um, and also more cool toned so on top of that for day number three I also wanted to do something more simple uh, and I want to go into the warm tone shades of the palette so I only used three shades for this look and I started off with the shade Valley um, and I put that on my outer corner which is the center shade in the palette then I went in with the shade Fushi on my crease and my lower lash line, which is that kind of light um, orangey shade on the bottom row. Um, and then lastly, I just went in with a shimmer shade and I went in with Plantasia again, all over my lid as well as on my inner corner. And that was look number three. So yeah, again, super happy with all those three looks. They were very different from each other and I wanted to kind of do that with this palette because I feel like originally this one felt very repetitive to me, but I feel like I could do three distinct looks, which I'm really happy with. Let me go through the um, use of this palette. Of course, I don't have any pants. This is actually the first time I used this palette, so it was brand new when I started off this week. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the uses now. So um, I used Plantasia twice. I did not use Calathea. I used Kumo Rebel once, Acacia twice, Kami Kami once. Um, I used Tipu once, um, Elysian I did not use, Valley, Citrine, Ray I used once each. For the last row I used Flax once, Fushi twice, um, I used Makia, Ixia and Willow once. So that is used for this palette. I had two shades that I didn't use which was um, again Calathea and Elysian, these two shades right here. But I have used them since, which I'm really happy with. So this one is no pan left behind it, actually now in October. So this one will be shared in the next video that way. But that was the uses for the week when I focused on this palette. So again, let's go through the ratings for this one. Um, for Color Story, I gave it a 4. I said I do love a warm green Color Story. And when this came out, I remember being super fascinated by it. I have fallen out of love with greens a little bit, even though the love is coming back a bit now for autumn. I also love the pops of unique colors in here. It's more than just your typical warm green color story. The only thing missing for me is like an easy in a corner highlight shade. Um, but yeah, so fourth color story, really like it. Um, this is like a few tweaks I guess I would do. Versatility, I also gave it a four. I said this palette might look quite repetitive at first glance. And yes, there are a few shades that are quite similar, but you can get really creative uh, color combinations, uh, really warm tone looks, cool tone looks, neutral looks, and colorful looks all within the same palette, so four there. For quality, I gave it a five. I said I love the quality in this palette. The mattes blend like a dream, and the shimmers are what I've been missing from Natasha Denona since the gold palette. They are sparkly, dimensional, and very impactful, just what I love. So five there. And for personal ranking, I gave it a four. I said I think this is such a fun palette, and again, even if I haven't been as into greens recently as I normally am, I do still appreciate this palette. I wouldn't say that this is one of my top, very top favorite palettes, but it's still kind of very high up there. Um, and maybe I just need some more time with it and play around with it more before I can fully fall in love. So four points there. And that also means that this palette scored in at 17 out of 20 points. So let's move on to the very final palette, which is the Nabla Dream Palette, um, which is a beautiful, kind of more neutral palette, but it does have some unique like undertones. It has both like warm, cool, and yeah, like rosy undertones, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a nice palette, and this is one that I got from a friend, and I hadn't played around with before doing the three looks. But let's move on to those next. So for day one, I wanted to do more of a rosy kind of look. So I started off with the shade Senorita, which is that kind of pink, deep shade. Um, and then in my crease, I went in with Sistina, which is more of a kind of corally crease shade. For all over the lid, I went in with Vanitas, which is on the top row. Um, and then for my lower lash line, I went in with Metal Cupid, which is right below it. And lastly, for look number one, I went in with uh, Immaculate on my inner corner. So that was look number one. For day number two, um, I went in with the shade Dogma first, which is the deepest shade in the palette. And I put that in my direct crease and on my outer corner. And uh, in my upper crease, and to blend that out, as well as on my lower lash line, I went in with the shade Lullaby, which is a kind of cooler toned matte right next to it. For my outer lid, I went in with the shade Delirium, which is the darkest kind of purplish um, shimmer shade in the palette. 
um, and then for the rest of my lid I went in with Inception and um, all over my lid and again in my inner corner I used Immaculate and that was look number two. For day three um, I wanted to do a simple kind of look again um, and I started off with the shade Illusion which is um, the kind of more neutral crease shade in the palette and I put that on my crease as well as on my lower lash line um, and then I went in with Rose Gold on my outer corner um, and then Byzantine all over my lid which is the True Gold Shimmer. Um, and again, for my inner corner, I used Immaculate, and that was look number three. So again, more of a simple type of look. So yeah, that was this palette. I actually used all of the shades in my three looks, but let me go through the uses. It's actually very, very simple to do because I used Immaculate three times, and then the rest of the palette I used once. However, I do have this shade here as my expandos pants, and I have used that one twice. Um, so I haven't actually made my goal on that shade, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's okay. Um, it's gonna roll over to next month. I'm gonna do get. I am gonna get my five uses out of it, but I just didn't get a chance to that one. I used twice. Let's go through the ratings for this palette here as well. We're gonna start off with color story, and and I give it a three. I said this is a good kind of basic color story, and um, I do think it's easy to work with, um, and you can get a lot of easy no brainer looks. There's light shimmers, mid-tone shimmers, and deep shimmers, and there's also good tone shades as well as deepening up shades for mattes. However, nothing really excites me or brings me out my creativity as part of the story, so it kind of falls in the middle at three. Versatility, I also gave it a three. I said you can do a good range of looks with this palette. Simple, smoky, warm tone, cool tone, and rosy, etc. kind of looks. Um, however, they all lean quite neutral. It's not a bad thing, um, and it's a great palette for every day, but you do lack the options for really creative or colorful looks, so three there. For quality, I gave it a 4. I said I do really like the quality in here. The mattes blend really nicely and it's easy to work with. Um, is the shimmer a little more kind of basic than I would want? 100%. But I do appreciate that for a lot of people, extreme kind of sparkly um, shimmers aren't um, a preference. So this palette has kind of very impactful but still sophisticated shimmers. So a really, really good all around quality palette. It just personally, I kind of lack some things. So that's why it's a 4. For personal ranking, I gave it a 3. I said there's absolutely nothing wrong with this palette, but I do feel like it's not one that necessarily kind of excites me. I do feel like I like it more now after playing around with it because it's such an easy palette um, to do work with, um, but I do also realize that I have these shades over and over in my collection. Um, it's a nice palette, but it falls completely in the middle for me, so 3 points, which means that this palette scores in at 13 out of 20 points. So those are all of the palettes, uh, but I'm also going to be, before I introduce the new palettes for next month, I'm going to just talk about these two palettes here very quickly, because I had these two in for Expandos pants last month, uh, but I wasn't quite quite able to hit my goal. So first up for the Novena palette, I had rolled in Volatile right here, and I had only used it once, I believe, in last month, which wasn't great. However, I have used this one two more times, and um, I'm actually wearing this one very lightly into a crease today mixed with a yellow. So that is my third use. So I'm not quite there still with that shade. I'm just not reaching for very cool tone looks at the moment, so I still have two more uses to go for my expandos pants. So again, it's another one that's going to roll over, which again is a bit of a shame. I should be able to reach for this one more often, but I'm not going for cool tone looks because I'm also trying to pan my soft glam palette, which has a lot of warm tones, but that's okay. I'm definitely going to get two more uses on this one in the next month. Then we have my Club Nebula palette, which is a beautiful, beautiful color story. And I actually wrote one of my favorite shades in here, which is this shade right here. I do think I have like two or three uses left in here. Um, and I'm happy to say that I have reached my goal. So I have now reached for this shade five times, which means that this one is going to roll out of Expandos pants. Um, yeah, so one is rolling over in combination with the Dreamy palette. So these two are going to roll over because Inception again, I am... And I have three more uses on, so two more uses for Novena and three more uses for the Dreamy palette. All right, so we are gonna jump into what palettes I'm introducing next for the next month of October. First up, we have this palette right here, which is my Wilderness palette. This is a beautiful, kind of more colorful, kind of grungy, almost rainbow palette. Um, it's a perfect palette for me for autumn. I think this is such an autumnal palette. And I wanted to pull in something more colorful because a lot of the palettes that I still have left to work on this year are more neutral. So I think this one is gonna be fun and give me a lot of variety. I can do some creative looks for this palette. So I'm really, really happy and excited to start working on this one. The second palette I'm gonna introduce is one of my Pat McGrath palettes. And this one is the Divine Rose 2 palette. It is more of kind of like rosier tone shades. It has somewhat kind of autumnal shades for me. I know a lot of people like going for like 
mauve and purple looks in autumn, but I like going with more greens. However, I do still think this is more of an autumnal palette, so I'm excited to reach for this one and create three looks with it as well. Then, um, the kind of, I guess, normally final palette I would talk about is this one right here, which is the Viva palette from Nona. This is a beautiful neutral palette. I wanted to bring in more of a neutral palette because the other two do have some more colorful shades in them. And I'm really, really excited to reach for this palette because it's such a beautiful one. And it is, again, I think a bit, I mean, it works all year round, but I do think it's a bit more autumnal as well. It has some more kind of, I don't know, darker mattes uh, and beautiful shimmers. And this undertones reminds me somehow of autumn. So I'm excited to reach for this palette too. It's gonna be nice to make some looks with this one on their own. Normally I use this one as a companion palette because of all the mattes, but yeah, it's gonna be nice to use this one on its own. And the fourth palette I'm gonna do a look with is my product level up palette, which is the Sultry palette. I'm not gonna show you it because um, I actually I can might, might roll some footage here when I'm talking about it, but uh, I rolled that one in. I haven't used it yet in this project, so I'm going to make three looks with that palette too. So that would be palette number four. However, I do actually want to potentially, if I have time, roll in a fifth palette, just because I'm realizing that I have a handful of palettes that I won't be able to get to. So either I have to roll this project into January, or I need to use like five palettes per month. So we'll see if I get around to this one, if I can, that would be amazing. But I'm also gonna roll in the mini Viva palette from Natasha Nona, which is just a five pan palette. Usually it's quite easy to make looks with these because it's a no brainer kind of thing. So this is the one I'm choosing to roll in as my potential fifth. And if I don't get around to it, that's fine. We're just gonna see how it goes in the month. But yeah, this is the palette I'm gonna focus on um, and we'll see if I get to it or not. And for expandals pants for next month, I only have one of those palettes with pants, which is the Wilderness palette. And I do have quite a few pants in here. Um, and I was thinking about what to do if I should randomize or if I should handpick. And I do think I want to handpick my shade just because I am panning a lot of other things. Um, and I was thinking between um, this shade here, this shade here, or this shade here. But I'm going to make it very simple because one of those shades have a pan, but it's a very, very small pan. It's almost been like covered. And that is this shade right here, which I think is called Ray. Yes, it's called Ray. So that's going to be my expand those pans because I want to make that pan more obvious. Uh, so I'm rolling that shade in the four or five uses. But that, you guys, is going to be it for this video. This has been a very, very long video to film. I have about 45 minutes of footage. So yeah, quite a lot. It always takes me forever to film these videos because there's so much information in them. But I do like doing this project. And it is one that I'm, I'm only going to do this year. I'm just going to go through all my pan and then once I'm done that's that's gonna be it so it has been a big project this year but um yeah I'm still excited to do it even though these videos take a lot of effort to film and edit but I, I do it for myself I do it for you guys and it's been super fun so I'm gonna wrap it up here I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are and I will catch you in my next one bye guys